Uh, last week we were uh, chatting about implementing things that were responsive that um, it would um, uh, would adapt uh, to the width of the page, and it's based on a, a technology that's uh, it's been around for quite a while in uh, in browsers that allow you to uh, write styling rules based on the width uh, of the page. Um, so I, I just wanted to build on on this. Uh, start from from scratch. I, I know there's been a couple questions on uh, on on Angular JS, and, and I think it's a good idea to just back up a little bit and and get started from um, from scratch. So so let's uh, let's build let's build on these two pages, right? The uh, one that lists uh, just dummy uh, websites, right, and one the other one that allows you to add new ones or edit existing ones. Right? So let's add controllers and whatnot. All right, so I'm going to get started and uh, create uh, 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 an index page, which is going to be the entry point to our Angular application, right? And it's um, it, it's a it's just a regular index page. We're going to load the various libraries that we need. Uh, I believe we downloaded them and have them locally here. I'm just going to load the the Angular. A library here, the uh, Bootstrap library, All right? So let's, let's get let's get that doing. So let's, let's have a link uh, that references the um, the Bootstrap, which I believe it's under the CSS. So I'm just going to go up one and then down to CSS, down to CSS, and then Bootstrap is there, I believe. There it is. And tell this browser that this is a style sheet. Uh, and let's load the uh, also the the Angular. A, a library which is um, up one sort let's see src let's go up one down to JavaScript and then down to the angular min there we go okay uh, let's make sure that we can navigate to this hello world so this is under app and, and it's under index right index HTML okay so we're there uh, and indeed, notice that the font tells us that Bootstrap has been loaded. Um, let's now declare our, very, our, our Angular application using ng-app. So ng-app is one of those, as we saw a couple of weeks ago, right? Allows you to declare uh, the application. So let's call it um, uh, WebMaker. Web app. Okay. Uh, if we load this, uh, we'll notice that um, the browser complains. Uh, that uh, there is no such uh, module called web app from the source in the console. Right? It says that I was looking for a module called web app, but I didn't find it. Right. So there's this this ng app is is one of those at, uh, attributes, custom attributes that are built are declared by the Angular framework, uh, and it tries to bind this HTML page to a Angular module called web app. Doesn't find it, uh, and it complains. So let's create that. Let's create the module. I'm going a little faster, so because we've we've seen this already. So let's declare the the app uh, that module here in a separate JavaScript file. And uh, so one of the uh, the design patterns that uh, we've been trying to push here is that we're going to declare everything inside a JavaScript module. Right, this following a design pattern called the iffy pattern. Right, that we declare everything inside of an immediately invoked function, right, the iffy pattern. And in here, we can then uh, make use of, um, of the Angular library to declare a brand new module uh, that matches the name that we declared here. Uh, so that we, we're, we're, we're basically declaring with the Angular infrastructure, we're declaring, hey, I'm, I'm creating a brand new module called web app. Currently, it has no dependencies. Right, so that once it's declared with the framework, I can then reuse it uh, by by its name, so if I refresh, uh, it's no longer complaining. It found the module. Okay. Okay. Now, one, now that we've declared it, uh, we can start playing around with some uh, some navigation. Uh, uh, and uh, for that, we're going to configure the navigation elsewhere in a config JavaScript file. And we're going to say that um, if um, Again, everything inside of an iffy statement, so we don't we don't want to litter the namespace, right? Everything is declared within the context of this function. Uh, we are going to 
uh, retrieve that, that module by name, we called it web app, okay, and start um, adding a couple things like configuring the routing. And, uh, and the routing is going to be implemented. Uh, you'll find a lot of uh, this, um, this syntax of nested functions inside of a, a function call. Uh, JavaScript is, has tons of this syntax where uh, you create anonymous functions right within a function call. Uh, that's that's vestige from um, uh, uh, JavaScript developers not wanting to litter the namespace, right? So they would use a lot of these these uh, anonymous functions. Right? So I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't give it a name, so I, I'm not I'm I'm not so littering the namespace. Go back to your app views. So so if you don't uh, pass in the dependencies, it's like I I want. The web app? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the, there's two. There's a, the syntax of this module is that it behaves um, depending on how many attributes you pass it. Yeah. Parameters. If you pass it one attribute, just the first attribute, it behaves like a read. Oh. Uh, if you pass it two arguments, it behaves as a as a uh, set. Yeah. So get and set, and that's also a very common design pattern in, Java, in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Is that the, a function will look at the parameters, and depending on what parameters you pass it, it'll behave as a set or a get. Mm -hmm. Very uh, unlike what you would do in Java. In Java, you have a specific set and you have a dedicated get, right? Uh, but in JavaScript, uh, it's very common that a design that it behaves the same function, but it behaves differently. We don't have in Java. We don't have uh, overloading. Um, there's no real over. I guess it's everything would be an overriding. Uh, if you declare a function, it just overrides it, uh, regardless of the ar number of ar arguments. So yeah. So this one is a read. That's a read. Okay. Okay, uh, so retrieve it. Uh, also notice the design pattern of um, uh, that most of the, uh, 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 it's very common in JavaScript that uh, uh, functions will return the instance of the object where they're declared. Okay, so mod, this module function returns an instance to Angular uh, in such a way that it allows you to call another function on the original object that we were using, right? Allows you to change all these things. Uh, so that's also very, very common in JavaScript. Anyway, I've, I've mentioned many, uh, many times that I don't like this syntax of declaring functions inside. I think it's very hard to read. Instead, I'm going to um, uh, de uh, uh, declare an honest to God function, right, with its own name. Uh, we don't have the problem of littering the namespace because we are declaring inside of a closure, right? Where it's not be it's not accessible outside of the scope of this function anyway. So we're not literally in the namespace. We don't have that problem. Uh, so uh, this configuration happens. This configuration happens when the uh, Angular is booting, right, booting up the uh, the and and and, um, and setting up the the application. This is this is before any templates have been parsed, before any controllers exist, any of that. This happens first, right? Um, and and what we like to be what we like to configure here is routing. Uh, to configure routing, we need an additional library, uh, which we're going to declare dependency on. We're going to say we depend on this other module, uh, just like somebody, just like we're declaring our own module. Uh, other folks can declare their own modules, and we can load them. You can load those modules by name, just like we're giving a name to our module. Yeah. Uh, someone can give a name to some other module, and we can refer to it here by name, right? This module, we actually need to load it. Uh, let's load it here. Uh, script source JS Angular route. Uh, so this is this module. Uh, what allows you to do is implement uh, navigation. We looked at that uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and it loads with it tons of other features, right? The ng app, for instance, is part of the core Angular, uh, which is loaded by this this over here. This one loads many, many, many other um, uh, additional uh, attributes. Right? Uh, one of the things that it loads is the following uh, the following uh, magical uh, um, uh, variable. Uh, that uh, we can ask by name, right? Like uh, like uh, using uh, a, 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 a simplified version of the version of, of control, right? Version of control. Is this, I, I, 
in, in Angular, they call it inversion control, but it's not really. Um, it's inversion control, and you can, you can control what it is that you inject mm -hmm. right, dynamically. Here, you can't. You just ask it by name, and now you're bound to be injected that one thing that you asked for, right? as opposed to being able to dynamically decide what it is that's being injected. Right? Um, typically, in Java, you could have, you know, you have bean XML, or you, know, you have XML files where you can then control or decide what it is that you want to inject. Right? So is this dependency injection or no? It, um, they call it dependency injection, uh, but it, 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 it's only, uh, it, it has some of the features of the de dependent injection, but not fully, you know, like .NET implements fully independent injection, and Java, you know, yeah. implements, you know, Spring MVC implements yeah. full in independent injection, not, not here. But they do, they do call it dependent injection. Uh, so it has, it has some of the flavors of being able to do that. Uh, like for instance, in Java, you would do annotations, you know, annotate, and then the name of the service, and then the variable gets injected an instance of that service. If you want to call that dependency injection, then yes, you have that here. Yeah. So by name, uh, we are asking for an instance of of a wrap provider, right? So these wrap providers, these are objects that that uh, are useful for <coughs> configuring the application before it gets going, before running, before uh, uh, it gets fully running. Uh, and, um, and it allows you to configure uh, the behavior of whatever you loaded, right? In this case, we're loading the routing mechanism. And one of the things that we like to route is that, uh, for instance, things such as uh, if, uh, if, um, if we see, um, if we see in, in the pattern, in the URL, if we see websites, right? then the following URL should be rendered, right? Templates URL, right? Because we, we are, we are, we are we're implementing single page applications. We're not using the old way of navigation, right? Where we have hard-coded links from one page to the next. We are implementing single page applications. We would like to load, go fetch this template, this HTML, and then inject it into index.html, right? So we're gonna load, in this case, is what? Website, web, this one, right? Yeah, website website list, yeah. this one right here, yeah. right? So website um, dash list that HTML, All right? Uh, and we we're, we're gonna we're gonna go fetch it, and we're going to inject it into a placeholder in the index page, right? Um, so let's do that, and um, we're gonna say we're gonna inject it right here, div ng view, right? So ng view works together, works together with ng route, works together with the route provider, right? What's configured, and whatever we ask for, that particular HTML will be injected into right here, where we tell it to, right? Into that page right here. Okay. Uh, so if we refresh, right, and we ask for that route, which is a hash slash websites. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, let's see. Website <laughs> list. Um, no, we called it. Um, did we call? Oh, we never loaded config config JS. Uh, still doesn't work. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Inspect. Uh, is, it is it complaining? Uh, app index. Index. Oh, things like this. There we go. Right. Yeah, you don't need the slash at the end. You need the slash. So, so this is um. So what what the route what the route provider does, right? What the route provider does is that it's gonna is going to listen for anything that's after the hash, right? Because it's a single page application, uh, the first page loads, which is index, and then we never leave index page, right? That's the whole point of a single page application is that. The first page loads. Everything else, right, is loaded under the covers, right, uh, um, and and we only fetch snippets of HTML to draw the rest of the page, right. That's the point of a single page. I think if you go, if you use Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, Gmail, all these are single page applications. You navigate to a to an initial route, right, and you never leave it, right, and then everything else. Right when you're composing a new email, or when you're when you're you know, searching, or whatever, right? At preferences, 
you, those are all snippets of HTML that are loaded behind the scenes, and and we replace the uh, the, the main um, a, a DOM tree, right? But we replace that without ever leaving index.html. Okay. So, so yeah. Quick question. So let's say you you have two windows. Yeah. Like, let's imagine a dashboard. <coughs> yeah. This one's getting fetching data, and this one's fetching data. Yes. So how, how would we load that in 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 here? Right. So so uh, one of the limitations one of the limitations in uh, of the ng route this yeah. is, this is the routing mechanism uh, for Angular can have only is that you can HTML? only have one ng view. Ah, okay. Only have one ng okay. view, and uh, there are alternative routing libraries. UI route is one of the more common ones. That's what we use in in uh, send client. We oh. use ng route and ng route. You can have not just ng several views, but you can have nested views inside of them, right? And you can define state machines. So depending on where your state is, mm -hmm. right, you can you can load the pages that can then paint the entire pit, right? So let's we'll use what is that called? Uh, UI route, UI route. UI route. It's route. this one we have. Oh. UI route. So UI, I think it's UI route. Angular UI router. Oh. Uh, it's a it's an alternative. And so this one uh, fixes the problem of just having one single ng view. Uh, and so Angular 2 yeah. uh, fixes this. You know, it says out of the box, it supports. So what's the best practice to use UI routes? Over UI router would be a better better solution. Oh, okay. yeah. it's, but it's much more complicated. It's, it's, a, it's state machines. You can, you can nest the states. Mm -hmm. Um, so let, let's play around with uh, and, and, uh, ng view. Right. Right? And then we can, it's very easily uh, extensible. But it's the same idea. Uh, so you could have you know, several of these views, like ng view one, two, three, four, right? And you can have them independent of each other. And then they can, you, can, you can nest them. ng view just doesn't allow nesting. Uh, so if we look at this, right? So it loaded the page. But uh, notice that the, if you look at the elements, you'll notice that there's ng view, right? Uh, from, the board, from the browser's point of view, if you look at the of the uh, page source, the source that was downloaded, the page was empty, right? It only had ng view, yeah. right? There's no HTML there. There's 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 no lists. Uh, there's nothing in it. But from the DOM's point of view, from the DOM's point of view, if you inspect the elements inside of ng view, you have all this other stuff. See that, including these nested links. See that all those nested links. Uh, which would, we don't really need all those links because we already have them in the head, right? All these links are already in the head. Uh, so we need to we need to uh, um, refactor our web list, right? And tell it, hey, you know what? You are no longer meant as a standalone HTML page, right? Um, uh, this is this is something that uh, uh, you know this would be an HTML page that we, we would get from uh, from a designer firm. Right, a fully blown HTML page that has the full uh, links to stylings and JavaScript, and you know, and, and, it, and it passes it to us, the, the developers, and we have to now uh, make it work. Right, we have to remove all this, all this styling. We're going to remove it. Um, we are using Bootstrap Man. Notice that we have a style here, right, which is under, is right there. We need, we need to load, so we have to remember to do that. Right, let's move that. Let's remove also this over here. So it's now your snippet, right? You're an HTML snippet, not a full-blown HTML page. So if we refresh, uh, it's a little broken, right? Because notice that it's we we, we didn't load our styles uh, page. Let's load that in our index page. Let's load that right here. So there's our link uh, with our href uh, and link the style sheet. There it is, and tell it that this is a style sheet. Is your link still running? Because you know, she just pinged me in there. Oh, no, I, I wasn't using it because I didn't think there was anyone there. Is it starting? No, this is uh, time. Time. Oh, okay. Loading. Hello, Tyne? Hi, Tyne, can you hear us? 
Well, if you can hear us, I'm sharing my screen. Sorry, uh, I didn't think anyone was going to join. Uh, but I'm recording it anyway, so if you want to take a look at it. Is she, yeah. is she responding? She's in this part of the All right. OK, good minutes, yes. All right, so let's continue. Uh, where were we? Oh, so, so notice that we have uh, we have a uh, the the original page that we had originally, but it's within the uh, an Angular uh, application. Right? Awesome. Uh, notice that the navigation doesn't work. Right? If I click here, uh, oh, it does. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, because it's it's a na notice that it's not na but it's not a single page application. Notice that the URL it's going to override. It's going to refresh this. You see that. Uh, so it's not staying inside of an Angular application. It's navigating away, right? So it's not inside the single page application that we would want. The single page application would stay in index.html, right? It would only load the content, but uh, without leaving index.html. So let's let's fix that. Uh, let's fix that. Uh, so we're gonna uh, in the config file, uh, we would we we can create another route. What, what these routes do, what these routes do is that knowing that we are a single page application and that we're never ever going to leave index page, mm -hmm. the only changes are going to happen after this hash, right? The ha the, and, and you'll see in our, in our consent client to you know, you'll see that the route, the, the, the initial uh, context never changes, right? And all the changes happen after the hash, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so, so, what, uh, uh, so that's a technique that has been around for quite a while. Uh, it was originally meant for being able to uh, jump around in, in the same within the same page and table of contents uses all the time. Right? You, you click this and it would, you, you have anchors uh, all, all over a page and you'd be able to just navigate up and down between the same page. Uh, so what Angular does is that it, it hijacks that functionality. Right? It listens for changes uh, after the hash. right? Uh, and then you, you can configure these things. So here we're saying if after the hash you see slash websites, uh, then load website list uh, HTML and then inject it into into this ng view. Basically, that's what it is, right? Uh, so so let's uh, let's play around with this a little more. And oops, uh, there we go. Uh, and say if we want to be able to edit uh, edit. Or maybe if we if we if we if we try to edit a particular website, maybe website with website ID, then we would like to go to website what? Edit. Website where well, there it is, right? Website edit. Navigate to website edit. Edit. Uh, load it if you have a particular ID. Um, uh, so that for instance, if I reload this, if I reload this. And then say websites slash one two three. Notice that it loads that editor, right? Yeah. Loads the editor with that ID. Um, all right. So, but website ID. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, website edit um, still is a. Notice that it's a full blown HTML page. We're going to remove uh, these these over here, right? We're going to remove that. And if we reload, we're, we're, still, we're still working, right? Because we have those links above and below. Awesome. Awesome. So now, now we have, and, and notice that the back buttons work, forward buttons work just fine. Uh, that's because uh, the, the hash mechanism uh, is uh, fully supported by the history of the browser, right? It pushes and pops from the, from the, browser, from, from the browser history. Uh, so we don't have that issue that we typically have on server-side technology that we you know, we're concerned of folks hitting the back button or the forward button, right? We don't have that issue because uh, the hash is fully supported in the in the history. Also, you'll notice that um, uh, the index page we don't really need it, right? We can just keep the hash, right? Because the the slash if we don't if we don't ask for a particular page, uh, by default the browser just gives you the index page, right? Uh, so you'll see a lot of that. Uh, in our own uh, send client and TP client, all our URLs omit the index page, right? And everything is just driven after the hash time. Right? You see a lot of that. 
Um, all right. It, but then I also noticed that, uh, especially in class management, when you're editing something, yeah. uh, extra window opens. And if you click on the, and if you change something yeah. in the DOM, you click on the back button, it's smart enough to know that the DOM, or you change some value. It says, do you really want to go back to the old right. page, or you want to save this data? Yes. Yeah. You can do that. Too, yes, right? certainly. Oh, okay. yep. Yes, sir. Um, so so let's uh, let's play around with uh, making this dynamic this uh, this uh, website. Well, before we continue, uh, um, notice that uh, these these websites, right? Uh, if, uh, if, if we start adding controllers, right, uh, this is going to start to get out of hand. Right? And, and the, 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 nu the number of controllers and pages um, might start to grow uh, quite quite large. So one one thing that we typically do is that we we organize this into a hierarchy, right? Uh, such as, for instance, you might you might put um, um, you might put uh, all the website uh, templates right under under a directory called website, so we can move those in there, right? If we move them there, now typically this would be a problem because uh, when you when you move templates around or HTML around, you can break a whole bunch of uh, uh, links. Yeah. Right, especially if, you, if you're using hard-coded links uh, where a page uh, literally refers to another page. Right? If you have dozens and dozens of pages, moving pages around is very, very precarious. Right? Uh, and one of the problems is that because the, the navigation is, logic is spread across all the pages. Right? So if you want to move a page, you have to now go uh, update any dependencies of all the pages that used to link to it. Right? Yeah. Um, and so conf what config allows you to do is have a single point of maintenance, right? Uh, instead of having to visit all those pages, uh, you have a single place where, where you can change those routes here, right? So it's much easier to maintain uh, when you have a single control, right? Um, you know, same thing in uh, struts. In web struts. XML. Yeah, where we have web.xml, you can, we, we can configure those navigation in a single place, yeah. you know, as opposed to uh, having to maintain it in a whole bunch of places. So. So the only place where I would have to maintain it is here, right? I can say that I move that inside of websites slash, right, in there, uh, so that if I if I go back and I refresh, notice that this still works, right? Oops, no. <laughs> Wait, did I? Websites, oh, websites, and then slash 321. So those, those routes still work, right? Those routes still work. Uh, because we're not using uh, the HTML literally as part of the URL. Instead, we have this abstraction, right, where we have, uh, where we are encoding. Th this more, this becomes now somewhat of a state, right, that represents the current state of the application as opposed to as a little HTML page. You see that? It's a little bit of abstraction there. Um, what else? Uh, one thing that I that um, um, uh, I usually do is that I don't like uh, using plurals. It's something of mine. <laughs> uh, we do use plurals in SendFly and TE, and I, I, I cringe every time. Um, I, look, I like to use uh, singulars. And it doesn't work. Let me reload it. Okay, there we go. Website. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's let's start uh, playing around with the controller for this, and um, uh, we, what we might do here uh, is add a controller for this website list, right? Um, and so we might we might be tempted to do the following, right? We would say website list controller client.js. This is a this is a very common uh, naming convention. Uh, where by looking at the name of the file, you immediately understand where does it fall in the application, right? Um, it, it, um, it carries the, uh, the controller tells me the role, right? What is the role of this file? Uh, and also client also tells me that, um, uh, that it's a, it's, it's, it, this is meant to execute on the browser. It's not meant to execute on the server. Um, so why did you put it under websites? Shouldn't it have its own directory controller? Right, so, so there are two competing uh, uh, ways to structure this. Uh, one, one, uh, one of the ways is that to have a dedicated 
controllers under here, and then all controllers would go under the controllers directory. Uh, and that's fine uh, for if you have just a few pages and a few controllers. Um, uh, I, I, I like to have these controllers as close as possible to the template that they are controlling, right? Uh, but uh, it, but even even here, uh, is, um, if you have them in the same directory, uh, it's kind of confusing that you have templates and running things in the same place. So typically what you'll find in our code, in our code base, is that we split them up into two directories. We'll have templates on one, and we'll have controllers in another. So these controllers would live under here. Uh, where you have these uh, HTML files under the templates, right? And you'll have the the controllers, right, side by side uh, with the, with the controls down here. And the name and the names would follow some notion that would allow you to know, oh, this is a template. This is a controller that goes with it, right? So, for instance, just like this would say, website list controller that client. The naming convention that this would be something like like follows would be something like uh, website dot view dot client dot html right again this tells you that the, its role right it's meant to be consumed by a human being right it's it's a view client is that this 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 html is dynamically generated on the browser as opposed to html dynamically generated on the server. Right, if you were using PHP or ASP or JSP, certainly you could generate dynamic HTML on the server side. This is dynamic HTML that is generated on the browser. Right, so the browser is dynamic. These are templates that are meant to be executed on the server, uh, uh, on the client. So if I follow that naming convention, let me rename all these two. So this is a view, and this is on the client side. Uh, since I move things around, uh, I need to update that in my config. Right, so this moved into websites, uh, templates. templates, or was it templates? Yeah. That's why I don't like to use plurals because I never know um, templates, templates. All right, and the names here change a bit. This is uh, view, and this is client, and this is uh, view, and this is client. Okay. See if we broke things around. Let's see if I reload. Okay, we still we're still good, right? Notice that uh, the URL still work, right? Even though I moved things around, right? So we never we're never going to break this, right? Because no, I'm not. I didn't mean to. Uh, we're never. Yeah, because it's binding to colon wid. That means anything. Whatever you type there, whatever you type, doesn't matter, right? Uh, matches this placeholder colon wid, right? okay. which we're going to talk about in a second. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so so this this list of website website lists we want to bind it to this controller which doesn't exist yet. There's nothing in there. We like to bind it to that controller, right? So we want to say that if that template is loaded, whenever we load that template, we would like to load also a controller along with it. Um, and say that uh, we're going to use a we're going to uh, load a website website list controller, okay? Uh, and we're going to declare that we're going to declare it here. Right? There it is. We're going to declare it uh, inside of an ify. Okay. Uh, we're going to load the our our module, and our module is what was it called? Web app was it? Okay. Web app. We're going to declare the controller right here, and the name that we chose uh, is website list controller implemented in a function of the same name, um, right there. And just to verify that these indeed are talking to one another, uh, we're going to use the scope to send a message back to the template. We're going to say scope uh, dot hello. And say you know hello from a list a website list controller. Right, just to verify that these two are talking to one another. Uh, so website <coughs> list controller, it's this one. Uh, because it's in the scope, um, it's this one, right? Uh, 
It's this one. Uh, let's let's uh, render that hello message right here. Hello. Right. If we refresh, uh, notice that it's not being interpreted by any controller. Um, uh, I think because we never loaded the controller in the first place, right? But let's load that into our index page. Let's load the controller. Uh, so there is a script uh, source, and the controller is located in websites, uh, controllers, and it's website list control. There it is. Right, so we load that. There it is. Hello from website list control. So now we have the template and the controller talking to one another, right? Um, so one question. So yes. Uh, I see all the controllers have the capital starts with the uppercase name, right? And the spec files start with the lower case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, exactly. So in our, uh, well, not all of them, right? They're not, they, don't, they don't all follow the follow naming convention. In, um, in send client, yeah. in send client, uh, the naming convention is to make them the, the, the files all capital. But not every follow the same convention. So for instance, you'll, you'll find some controllers, capital, some lowercase. Um, uh, and, uh, so we would, we would need to go back and refactor some of these right, so that they all follow the same naming convention. Um, they did follow the, 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 that the specs all end with spec, yeah. right? That's good. Uh, and uh, the, the, the test um, mechanism called Karma looks for these files right, that end with you know, star spec.js uh, and loads them and runs them in the, in the uh, unit testing. Uh, but you know, whatever, whatever, the, 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 um, whatever the, the, the team decides yeah. as a naming convention, everybody should follow, right? A naming convention that I like to follow is this one, where if, if it's the naming convention that we have here is the CTRL, 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 CTRL everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a naming convention that I prefer that I've used in many other teams is to you know actually spell it out. Control. I don't like acronyms uh, or or abbreviations. Um, sometimes abbreviations. You know, is it CTRL or is it um, you know C CRL or CTL or and this is. What is it? Yeah. I, just, I like to just spell it out uh, and use dot notations in between. Again, whatever the team agrees, mm -hmm. right, should, should just uh, follow along. Um, what was I? Oh, uh, so scope. Uh, uh, so these these uh, uh, the, um, so these these variables uh, like like hello over here. Um, what we try to do is not use variables that are not scoped specifically to a particular scope, right? And this is this is this is being scoped at the default scope that the controllers uh, are, are using. Uh, ideally, we would like if, if you have many controllers uh, that are manipulating the same page. Uh, ideally, we would like to be able to identify specifically which controller is responsible for giving us this data, right? this this variable. Right. Uh, instead of you know um, just just using the default scope, so ideally we would like what we would like to be able to do is um, is a, a bind uh, variables to a specific scope, right? Um, so one one very common uh, uh, one very common uh, design pattern uh, is to instead uh, bind the um, uh, Bind it to the instance of this controller, right? Make bind it to the to the current instance of that controller. So bind it uh, like this instead, right? So you so now this 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 string is not bound to the scope variable. It's not bound to the scope variable. Instead, is bound to the this keyword. Right? This keyword is the like in Java, right? Is a pointer or is a reference to the current instance. Uh, this controller is being used as a this function is being used as a as a constructor, right? Uh, to create an instance of this controller, uh, and and this keyword, like in Java and many other languages, uh, refers to the current instance of the object instance, right? So now this this variable is bound to the to the instance of the controller, uh, and um, and we use we use um, a, a local variable 
that has a meaning to us, right? Um, and our meaning is that this is going to, uh, the, the current instance is going to hold all the data, right, that we're going to pass along to the view for rendering, right? That's our meaning. Um, I, I personally don't like to use the keyword model, even though in our code we use model everywhere. Uh, the, the only thing I don't like is that sometimes it can be confused with the model on the server side. And that's uh, it's the big M model, right? The, the, the model as in uh, you know, all the classes that are, uh, are, are being implemented on I the mean, server side. If you do side. that same thing in another controller, then you don't know which model it's coming from, right? True, yeah. that too, that too. Uh, although we use this quite a lot in our sent client and TV. Use a, we use model all over the place. I guess you could argue that it's okay. I, I don't know. I, I personally don't like it. But I'm going to use it because we use it a lot in our, in our code base. So what, what, what do you use? Um, I've, we, we've had this debate with, uh, um, with uh, uh, Jerry. Uh, 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 um, a, lot, a lot of design patterns say to use something like, uh, something like a VM uh, with the, or maybe view model, maybe. As in, this is, this is a model uh, for the purposes of consumption for the view, for rendering the view. It is not big model M on the server model, right? It is a little model, right, for only for rendering for the view, right? Which is a subset of that big M model, right? But then if some other controller uses the same thing that you don't know where it's coming. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, or, you know, follow, uh, or use the name of the controller, <laughs> right? Model, right? Uh, a very common naming convention is to use view model or VM or, or something like that to that end. Um, but I'm going to use model the way we use it in, in, our, in our code. Uh, so so um, now, now that it's bound to the instance of the controller, uh, if we load this now, it's, 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 it's not there anymore, right? Because it's not bound to the scope. Right. It's not bound to dollar size scope anymore. Uh, so if we want to access the instance of the controller, right, we need to tell in the configuration file that the template, this template, is no longer going to access data from the scope. It's going to access it actually from the instance of the controller. Uh, and we, we need to tell, we need to configure and say that that template is going to be able to access the controller instance as the following variable, right? We can give it a name, right? We can say that this is the website uh, list model, okay? Right, and so, so, so now internally from within the templates, uh, 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 that instance, the, the instance of the controller can be accessed through that variable. Right, so that if you load it now, uh, we have that, that data available now again, again. See that the hello is now rendering. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right, we, we can access the instance of that controller through whatever we configure here, whatever name we want to give it. Right? Uh, one common way is to use the name of the page so that we understand that this is the, the boundary, right, what, what the variables are bound to. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. So... Uh, so, so let's let's remove this dummy dummy example and this model here. Okay. So now that we have we have this model, we would like to be able to actually have data. Uh, in our case, uh, our template is rendering through a list of of dummy websites, right? Um, as the what what is that? What's the schema? The schema seems to be uh, the name of the website when it was last opened. Who the owner is, right? So we have those three. So let's create uh, a couple of um, let's create a couple of those uh, websites. We'll say var uh, websites, and it'll be an array, and uh, it'll be something like uh, what is the title or, or the name of the website? Yeah. Uh, so let's say Facebook. Uh, the last opened. Uh, so last opened. Uh, maybe it'll be an instance of a date, so a new date. Uh, and what else? Owner. 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 Uh, me. 
Okay? Let's create a couple of these. Uh, so maybe Twitter uh, and uh, LinkedIn. And this is me, this is Charlie, uh, and this is Dan. Uh, and if we want to send it over to the to the to the template for rendering, we can say model dot websites equal websites for rendering. Uh, so that on the on the templates we can render it at the top. We can just say uh, what is it website list model dot websites. If we render that template. There we have the raw JSON, right? That is being sent from the controller, right? And uh, and so now we could we could now re, uh, um, rehash this so that instead of iterating over these dummy over these dummy uh, um, uh, uh, these dummy uh, templates, right? Uh, we can we can use this over here, right? We can use this uh, this li. And iterate over this, right? Iterate using ng repeat, right? We can do ng repeat of website in website list model. Let's copy that. And website list model. And actually, let's move this down here. Let's move this down here. <coughs> let's put it down here. So just for just for debugging purposes. And as we iterate, you'll notice that indeed now it's, it's copying and pasting three times the same exact thing. Uh, instead of, of uh, having these hard-coded names, right, we can say that we want the website web site name. We want uh, this to be the website uh, last opened. Was it last opened? And this is the uh, owner. Owner. Right, so then we have uh, the dates, me, right? And notice that this is rendering as the, the, the dates is being rendering, uh, rendered as a, a string representation of the date. Uh, a better, a better uh, uh, so um, what do you call it? Uh, Angular provides what are called <laughs> filters, right? Filters are um, JavaScript pieces of code uh, that can be uh, used. To, um, can be used to take in uh, data, transform it in some way, right, and then return the transformed uh, version of that. There's a whole bunch of, of, uh, of, of um, um, uh, default filters that you can use, and you can write your own, right? So uh, filters allow you to uh, pipe data into the filters, right, and then uh, return to you right, the converted version of whatever you piped into it, right? Uh, so for instance, you could say that this is a date, right? So there's a date filter that Angular uh, provides that uh, one of the things that it does is that it takes a date object, right? And then it returns a, um, a, a representation of that date in a formatted fashion, right? The default format is to have a, a, a very short date uh, representation, which is an abbreviated month uh, day and the year, and you can certainly com confirm change the format. Make sense? Everything. All right. Uh, so, what about these uh, these hyperlinks? Right. These hyperlinks noted that they're they're I iterating um, and want to navigate to a website edit.html that no longer exists. Right. Um, uh, ideally, what we'd like to be able to do instead, right, is to navigate to slash website slash and the ID of that website, something like that, right? Uh, so something like perhaps uh, website dot underscore ID, some ID, right? But we don't have IDs, we don't have those IDs. Uh, so why don't we add that to the schema? So let's go back to the controller and let's add an ID to all of these, right? Uh, so we, we would have here underscore ID, one, two, three, perhaps, maybe a spring. Things in string one two three, uh, and let's create all these IDs and add them to the schema of each one of these websites. Uh, so this might be two three four, and this might be three four five. Right? So let's refresh that. Uh, if you hover over this, notice that the, the 
that the URL is actually correctly formatted, right? Slash website one, two, three, website two, three, four, and LinkedIn, you know, it's website three, four, five, right? So that if you click on it, notice that it correctly navigates, right, to the website editor for that, right, for that. And notice that it's in the URL, you have the one, two, three, uh, two, three, four, right, at the top, which could be used, right, by the controller to fetch that ID and then go back to the server and fetch all that, that information. Yes? That makes sense? All right. All right, so so we have this uh, this kind of working. It is somewhat dynamic, right? It is, uh, but but really this this data shouldn't live here. This actually should really live on the server, right? So let's let's write uh, some code that will allow us to fetch data from the server instead of having it hard coded here. Okay. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, one way to do that is that um, what we'd like to be able to do is uh, encapsulate data in a service, right? That goes out to the server to fetch this. Uh, so to do this, uh, we want to have maybe something like a website service that we would like to be able to fetch the websites from. Right? Uh, currently, we don't have that service. Right? If we refresh and look at the console, we go back, look at the console, um, and we refresh. Notice that it's complaining. It's complaining in the console saying, I can't find this website service. Okay? Uh, we, we're, asking, we're asking the underlying framework to inject, right? something called website service and, it, and call us right with that instance but it doesn't exist um, uh, so let's let's create a website service let's create a website service now since since uh, services uh, since web uh, uh, services uh, there's only going to be a few services as opposed to templates and controllers uh, it makes no sense to uh, to, to declare a, a, you know, a deep hierarchy of these services. Uh, I guess you could argue, right, that you could put the services right under here, right? And that's true if you have lots and lots of services for lots and lots of different uh, uh, features, right? But we don't have that many, we're not going to have that many services. So a better approach is to, to, to declare an all instead of a directory of services. Again, uh, the, the team would have to agree that that is the way we want to break it up, right? If we see that this services directory is growing and we have a, you know, a dozen of these services, we might revisit and say, you know what, I think it's better if we split it up per feature set, right? Um, maybe maybe by, uh, we'll have a teacher, right? For the teachers, we're going to have a set of services and for the students, we're going to have a set of services and, the, and they, don't, they don't cross. Uh, the feature set do not cross. They deal with different types of entities, and that's a better way to break it up. And that's that's the, we could we could revisit that. But anyway, so on the services, let's create a uh, a website uh, website uh, dot service. Again, this is the the role <coughs> service, and this is a client. So this is a service right, that is going to be used by the client to go fetch data on the server side, right? So this is executing on the ser on the client side, and its role is to play the service, right? To to play to provide a an API, right? That would allow me to fetch data, right? Um, so uh, it'll do things such as again everything in, a, in an ify, in a module. Would it be better to specify what it's doing in the name? It is website, right? Uh, so typically, what what it'll start with the uh, since since it's, since it's dealing with data, yeah. uh, typically it'll start with the entity that it's dealing with, yeah. right? Uh, then it's you're saying that it's a service, and uh, and service that means that it gives you a clue that it'll give you all the CRUD operations, right? It'll be able to create. Uh, oh, read, so you put CRUD operations in, this in one service, oh, yes, okay. right? Uh, and and each service will have all sorts of CRUD operations, right? right. Create, update, delete, read. Several reads, yeah. maybe find, find by ID, find by all the finders would be here. Um, in 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 a, for instance, one of them, let's let's declare let's declare one Angular Angular, uh, and uh, we'll we'll fetch the module. Um, what was it called? Web app. Web app, and we'll use a factory to create. Uh, create the uh, this right and it'll be the 
I called a website, I think it's capital website uh, service, implemented in a function of the same name. So here's a function, website service, right? Uh, that is going to encapsulate all the data, right? Instead, did I spell it? Yeah. Oh. Right, it's going to encapsulate all this data. So instead of the controllers encapsulating this data, it's the service that's going to encapsulate it uh, here, right? And it's going to provide an API return API, right? Uh, that means that what, what factory does, it just creates a singleton, right? It calls your function, right? It evaluates it, and then that instance, whatever it returns, binds it to a, uh, a global variable website server that can then be asked by using injection, okay? Uh, which indeed, that's what we're doing here, right? In the controller, we wanna ask for it by injection, right? Anybody who can, can refer to the service by name just so we could do scope, right? That's the service. Dollar, dollar sign scope is a service, right? But it's a service that is instantiated by the infrastructure. That's why it has dollar sign, right? Here we're creating, we can, you can create your own services, right? Uh, by using the factory, creates a singleton, which then can then be uh, uh, accessed by name, uh, by injection, right? So in our case, what are we, do what are we doing? Uh, we want to do, you know, find all websites, for instance, right? Find all websites, uh, which is going to be implemented by a function of the same name, right? So the function bit might live down here, uh, and it's going to return, return websites, websites, right? Uh, so now, uh, bless you. Now we, 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 what we'd like to be able to do is that instead of, instead of us, being responsible for that data, we're going to go through a nice API that allows us to retrieve all that information. So find all websites. There they are, right? Find all websites. Uh, if we refresh, right? If we refresh, uh, it's still saying that the websites is not defined, right? We never loaded it in the index page. Yeah, I think next next week I'm going to talk about uh, uh, require JS. Uh, because we, we don't want to have to declare all the JavaScript here. We want to load them only when needed, right? Uh, so let's let's load this, that service. Script as I see. So it's um, services and website service. There it is. Okay, so there it is. We are exactly where we were just a minute ago, right? Um, but we're going now. The controller. We're, we're pushing. We're pushing the data further and further into the, the tiers, right? It's not the controller. The controller's responsibility is to uh, read input and then provide data to the view. That's all. It's, it's not. Its responsibility is not to maintain data. Um, so this is a little better, uh, but not not enough, right? So let's push this this data even further up to the server side. Uh, so to do the server side, uh, let's uh, create a, a RESTful API. That um, that would allow us to respond for for HTTP requests, right? So let's do that. Uh, let's um, let's create a uh, under you know un, under um, uh, let's see uh, what do we call it web app yeah. web app under there. Let's create an app.js and let's pass uh, an instance of the Express library under there. Uh, so let's create a directory uh, called web app. Uh, and uh, under here, let's create that app, app.js on the server side. And, and here we can listen for incoming HTTP requests. We can say uh, module uh, exports uh, equal function. And we're receiving an instance of the, of the express library. And we can listen now for incoming HTTP requests. Uh, if somebody wants to ask for um, uh, slash API and want to ask for all the websites, right? We're going to respond with uh, find all websites, right? Okay. Implement it in a function of the same name, like find all websites. 
and we're going to respond with this array of websites. So let's declare that on the server. Right? And this is going to respond uh, with uh, uh, so here's a request coming from the client. Here's a response that allows us to respond back. And we can respond with the data, the JSON data, which is this array. Okay? Uh, so, so the client uh, can now, the client, instead of hard coding this data, right, this one, this find all websites can, can go fetch it from the server, right? Using the HTTP service. We can say HTTP, go fetch me, instead of this hard coded uh, website, right? It says go fetch me, generate a GET request to the URL. What's the URL? This is the URL, right? I'm going to try and hit the server right here. Right? And uh, once, you, once you successfully receive it, once you successfully receive it, um, let's just display it here in the console for now. Uh, let's do a console log response. This is a response coming from the server. Uh, let's, uh, let's restart our server. Let's restart our server. Response can be rescued. Yeah, this 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 doesn't matter. Right? The, the, the actual name. There's no injection here. That's not. There's no injection. That's an actual function that is being called by the success function. I call it. And the first argument is the response coming from the server. Right? Uh, so so notice that this 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 breaks now, right? Because the website, the web server is not actually responding anything to the controller, right? Instead, what is it doing? If you know, if you look at the network, right, and you refresh, uh, it's actually making that call. You see that website API website, and the server is responding with those three, right, with those three uh, websites, right, uh, and displaying in the console. I believe they are they are in the console, right. Um, what we want to do is that instead of just displaying here, just we're gonna we're gonna instead. Uh, just send it back. Send this back to the controller. The controller. The controller is uh, this instead of now this being a synchronous call, right? Where the where the controller is calling the, the the service and the service is immediately responding, right? That's a synchronous call. This is now an asynchronous call, right? Um, this. This here is no longer responding immediately with the array. Instead, is responding with a with a promise, right? A var a promise. Okay, and the promise uh, uh, basically is asks the server, "Hey server, uh, I'm going to give you a call back because I can't I can't block and wait for you to respond, the server to respond. Instead, uh, I'm going to register a function with you." So that when, when sometime in the future, a couple milliseconds from now, a, a second from now, two seconds from now, whatever, uh, browser, call me back, and I want you to call me back. Uh, if it's successful, call this function back, right? A function. Call this function and pass me the response right here. And I'm going to display it, console log. The response. Okay, so if I if I refresh, still coming back, right? Still coming back. There they are in the console. Uh, or we could just we could just bind it to the model websites. The response, right? Uh, and we have our, our we have our websites back. See that we have our original websites back, uh, but these are now coming from the server. Right, they're not they're not hard coded on the client at all, right? Everything, everything still working? Yes. Yeah, so you just randomly called it a promise, right? You were able. Yeah. To no, that's it's how right. How did it how did it have a dot success attribute? The so the object that this the the this this returns an object. Oh, which has right? a dot success. Which has a, oh, a, a dot success, right? Okay. Um, we could actually print it out. You can say console log promise. So we can look at the we can look at the um, it's an object right we just printed it has an error function and it has a success function right 
Uh, and the function uh, it has well, arguments. It doesn't show you the arguments. Oh, there they are. Yeah, it has arguments. Uh, yeah, so this is the internal representation of that function, right, of that object. Okay. Uh, it has two, uh, that object has two functions. That error, if it fails, if the browser sends 503 or 404 or any, <coughs> anything other than two, anything in the 200s, yeah. uh, it will call instead the error, and it will pass you the error along. Right? So you can do some error messaging or whatever. Um, so what about, what about uh, if I click here, right, if I click on Facebook, uh, I am I am uh, going to website and then one two three. Uh, here uh, I would like to be able to uh, display that particular website, right? Data for that particular website. That means that this controller should also fetch that website, but not all of them, just one of them. Right? I'd like to be able to retrieve the website by ID. Uh, so to do that, uh, before we do that, uh, this to, it, it's much easier if we collapse this. Right, and just put this like this. Let's just chain it. I think this is a little bit easier to read. So in this, instead of these functions, instead of these functions like that, we create a function. Just call it called you know, render websites, right? Render websites, and then an explicit function called render websites web sites. That receives a function of webs of uh, sorry receives the websites here, which is basically right these websites right so so uh, call success render websites is a response that contains the array of websites and I'm binding it to uh, websites in the model right did I break anything? Break. Oh, it still works. Uh, it's five o'clock. Um, should we continue? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, so when I when I click on this, right, what I like to be able to do in the controller, in the controller of the of the of this um, um, website edit, right, I like to be popu I'd like to populate that website for one two three. <clears throat> That's it. One two three. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. You weren't here. You, you were taking a. Uh, so in the in the <coughs> templates, in the templates, uh, the name of the website, right? We are encoding, right, the ID of the website as part of the URL. So if you click on any one of these websites, right, you are passing in the URL, right, the ID of the website that you clicked on, right, so that it can be used by the by the controller of that page. Right, to go fetch. Yeah, no, but is it part of the JSON that's coming back from the... Uh, right, yeah, so, right, so part, part of the, part of the, um, part of the JSON, right? Notice that there's an ID. Oh, I got it. One, two, three, two, okay. three, four, yeah. Okay. One thing I noticed, the app side, you didn't do the same naming convention on the server side, you just called it app instead of app.server.no, app.role.no. Right. So yes. When you look at it, you don't know whether it's Node exactly, exactly. Or oh no. Yeah. 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 We didn't spend time. So. Uh, uh, so yeah. So typically, what you would do on the server, you would do something similar as well. You would have a directory of services. Services, and you would have here a file called website dot service dot server dot js. So this this name mirrors the website. Yeah. That server, that client, yeah. right? and I know this is Node.js, and, Node and there's Node.js exactly. So, so this would be uh, this would be Node.js, and what this would have is a module, right? Exports uh, function uh, that uh, receives app, right? And the actual code for app here, this, uh, all this would actually live there. Would live here, right? And the responsibility of the top level app, right, would be to load all the required modules, right? It would say uh, var website service, right? Load require, and uh, what is it? C 
services website service, right? And pass it app, right? So the responsibility for this is that there are many services, right? I need to load the website service, the page service, all these services. I need to load all the models, pass all those models to the services, right? All the data model that deal with the database. Uh, so th that's how you would break it up on the server side, right? Uh, same thing, you would, you would have uh, separate directories for model. You know, something like models would live under here. Uh, and they, in here, you would encapsulate all the data schemas, all the, all the models that do all the CRUD operation on the server side, right? Uh, so, so the services deal with the uh, interaction between HTTP world, right, and the, and the, and the object world. Uh, and then the model does the, the conversion between the, the, the object-oriented world uh, in JavaScript and, uh, and either a, a SQL uh, world or no SQL world. Right, the the, the, the the persistence layer. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you would have each tier uh, responsible for these conversions, right, in the different tiers. Uh, let me restart. See if I broke this. Okay, still works. Still works. Right. Actually, I'm going to leave it here uh, right, because this this is pretty involved putting the controller and whatnot for for this one. Okay. All right. All right. That that makes sense. Yes. Uh, 